1993, Malaysia was witness to one of the most sensational murder cases of the 20th century. A politician named Datuk Maslan Idris was found murdered, his body skinned and mutilated into 18 parts. This is the story of the witch killer, Mona Fandi. Mona Fandi was born in Perlis in 1956 as Masna Ismail. Young Masna was passionate about singing and her ultimate dream was to become a pop star. She married Mohammed Noor Afandi Abdul Rahman, who promised to help her achieve her dream. The couple worked together to launch her music career, producing an album titled Diana, on the Maslan stage name Mona Fandi. Unfortunately, her pop career was a flop, so Mona decided to abandon her dream and venture into something else entirely, witchcraft. The couple found success soon after the career change. They started offering rituals and artifacts to high-profile clients who paid them hefty sums of money for their services. Soon, they began living the high life and reportedly purchased several mansions and luxury cars. In 1993, a state assemblyman from Batu Talam named Datuk Maslan Idris approached the couple. He believed this couple's witchcraft was the key to making his political career soar. Mona convinced Maslan that she had the mystic powers to fulfill his request. She offered Maslan three mystical items, a staff, a songcock, and a talisman, in exchange for 2.5 million ringgit. The mystical items were believed to be owned by Indonesian President Sukarno. It was said that anyone in the possession of these artifacts would become invincible. Maslan paid half a million ringgit and surrendered several land titles as a promise for the remaining payment. On that fateful day, Mona arranged for Maslan to visit their house to conduct a cleansing ritual. During the ritual, the couple and their assistant, Juraimi Hassan, had Maslan lie down with his eyes closed as Mona placed flowers on his body. Then, without warning, Juraimi swung an axe on Maslan's neck, severing his head. They skinned and mutilated Maslan's body into 18 parts and buried it in a storeroom nearby. A few days after the murder, Juraimi was apprehended for an unrelated drug offence. High and on drugs, he blurted out to the police that he had been involved in Maslan's death and led them to the storeroom where they hid his body. Shortly after, Mona and her husband were arrested. Mona, Nor Afandi and Juraimi appeared before the court in 1995. The High Court convicted them of murder and sentenced all three to death by hanging. Through it all, Mona remained smiling and unfazed. After hearing the verdict, she was heard to have said, I'm happy and I want to say thank you to all Malaysians. Mona was photographed smiling as she was escorted to prison. Finally, Mona Fandi had achieved the dream of becoming famous after all. On 2nd November 2001, Mona Fandi, the witch killer, was executed. And her last words were, I will never die. <laughs>